Hey, what's up? How's everyone doing? It's David, and today I'm going to do a scuff controller for the Xbox 360 review. Now, the holiday shopping season is right around the corner, so it's time to start thinking about what you're going to get for somebody else or maybe what you want to get for yourself. So, I play quite a bit of Call of Duty, and I've been playing on a regular Xbox 360 controller. At the beginning of the year, I switched to the tack layout where you press the right thumbstick to drop so that you can drop shot quicker. But because I did that, I don't have quick access to knifing. I have to press the B button to knife. So because I switched to attack layout, I lost a lot of my knife fights because most people play on a default layout where you just press the right thumbstick to knife. And I can't aim my knives because I have to press the B button and they're always going to be faster because pressing the right thumbstick is faster than switching your thumb over to the B. So I was thinking, about a better option. How can I still have access to instant knives while playing on attack layout? At the beginning of summer, I got this controller. It's a Mad Cat's Ghost Recon controller, and it's third party, but what it has is it has buttons on the back. So these click too. The left side, there's not a whole lot there. It just goes D-pad up, left, and to the right. And the right side, it has this option where you can make your sensitivity super low so you have like sensitivity mapping on the fly. And you can also adjust it to be a B button, an A button, or an X button. So this mappable control, so this one button down here. So I like that. I could still knife by pressing this button on the back, and I could still drop shot by pressing the right stick. Now over here, this side, it wasn't very useful. So, I watched one of the bigger YouTubers do a video demonstration of what a scuff controller is, and the scuff controller has two paddles on the back. This one, on the left, I have mapped to A. So, to jump in Call of Duty, you press this button, and to knife, you press this button, which I have mapped to B. Now, I'm showing on screen what exactly I purchased all the options that I got for this controller. I got two convex thumbsticks, so they're dome topped. I got a regular D-pad. I got the option to have all my buttons blacked out because it looks cool. And I got a really cool grip thingy. It's like a scuff patented grip, military grade rubberized grip opposed to the regular grip for Xbox 360 controllers. So a lot of big YouTubers have talked about a scuff controller in their reviews and a lot of people are worried about taking their reviews to heart because they're worried about big YouTubers receiving sponsorship because they have a 5% discount for a scuff controller in the description of their videos. But don't worry, I'm not sponsored by anybody. My review is going to be completely honest and mostly objective. So there's a lot of controllers on the market that are supposedly optimized for tournament play, like the Razer Onza Tournament Edition and the new Mad Cats MLG controller. And the, M the MLG controller is $100 for Mad Cats. And this controller default is probably only $80 if you don't get any of the other options. Shipping is pretty hefty. It's like $10 to ship. And it takes a while for your order to get filled because all of them are custom and you have to wait for parts to get delivered. So let's break this controller down individually. What do I like about it? I got the options to have both thumbsticks domed. So it's like the convex thumbsticks of the PS3 as opposed to the concave thumbsticks of the Xbox 360 controller. What are the advantages of domed thumbsticks? Well, when you use a domed thumbstick, you have a little bit more leverage. It's a little bit higher up on the controller than a convex controller from an Xbox 360, as you can tell. What this gives you is more surface area in which you can move your thumb. So it allows you to be a lot more precise. So if you play on a three sensitivity with the Xbox 360 controller, with a scuff controller, you might be able to move up to four sensitivity without feeling much of a difference because of the additional amount of surface area you're given to move your thumbs. Also, I sprint a lot in my games, so you would imagine I'm pressing the left stick down a lot. When I do that a lot on the regular Xbox 360 controller, 
there's a lot more movement to be done. It takes a lot more force to press this down, in my opinion. So, I mean, my thumb gets tired a lot after sprinting in a lot of the games I play, like Battlefield or Call of Duty. With this controller, I don't have to press as hard to use the sprint mechanic, so I can play for longer without getting tired. Next, let's talk about the paddles on the back. I already showed you the buttons on the back of my Ghost Recon controller. And Mad Cats also makes another similar controller. They had it for Black Ops where they have buttons on the back. But you can get these buttons set to pretty much whatever you want. You can get this set to X and Y if that floats your boat. But the advantage of having a bumper on the back is you can knife while still playing on attack layout without ever moving your thumb away from the thumbstick. Also because the thumbsticks are domed and convex instead of concave, moving the thumbstick is like a natural rolling motion. Do you see what I'm doing with my thumbs there? Versus if you were playing on this Xbox 360 controller with the concave thumbsticks, it's more of a push. So moving your thumb around the scuff thumbstick is a little bit more natural and you don't have to resist the motion as much as if you were playing on the Xbox 360 controller. Another option that you can get, but I didn't choose to get, is to get trigger stops. Trigger stops are for games like Call of Duty in particular, where you don't have to depress the trigger as much to fire off successive shots. Because in Call of Duty, there is a pretty well ordained sweet spot where your trigger can be pressed down to. But I didn't get that option because I have to use this controller for games other than Call of Duty. So now on screen, you're gonna see some game footage of me playing Call of Duty Spec Ops with a hand cam showcasing what it's like to play with a scuff controller. I put post-it notes on the controller to show you what each button does. So do I recommend this scuff controller as a purchase? Yes I do, but most people will end up spending more than $100 on their controller and if you get one of the custom camos for your scuff controller, you can easily be spending about $140, $150 after shipping. There's a lot of other stuff that you can get gaming related that is worth that much money. You can get yourself a headset, you can get multiple games. So you really have to think about what you want out of your gaming experience. If you're a competitive player, like you play multiplayer games 75% of the time, games like Halo, Call of Duty, Gears of War, then you may think about investing in a scuff controller, but only after you have like a headset and any other peripherals to help you succeed first. If you have a nice headset, if you have a nice monitor, and you're looking for another thing that can help you, Try out the scuff controller, it certainly helped my game performance. But if you're only a casual player, I think your money is better spent elsewhere. For other alternatives to a scuff controller, you could try these MacCast controllers. This is the Ghost Recon branded one, but they also have a Call of Duty Black Ops 1 brand one. So look around eBay for those, because you can also knife with the button on the back here. 
but I really wouldn't recommend the Razer Onza Tournament Edition or the Mad Cats MLG because the Mad Cats MLG is a hundred dollars and it doesn't do nearly as much as the scuff controller does. Now, what are my recommendations for accessorizing this scuff controller? I think you should keep the triggers as A and B so that you could use it for more games and only get the trigger stops if you play a lot of Call of Duty. If you don't play a lot of Call of Duty, don't worry about getting the trigger stops because they're pretty annoying to have to take out and put back in every single game. But if you just want the dome thumbsticks, you don't necessarily have to get a scuff controller. You can just get a little wrench thing, open up your controller and swap out the thumbsticks. They're pretty cheap off Amazon. So get a scuff controller only if you're satisfied with the accessories you already have. If you're satisfied with your headset, if you're satisfied with your monitor, then by all means get a scuff controller if you're looking for improving your gameplay because these things could make a significant difference for you like they have for me. But if you're only a casual player, I think the $100 to $150 you might spend on this is better invested elsewhere like other games or a headset or you know maybe even another console. So anyways guys, that's my review. I hope I've helped you out a lot with your buying decisions. Have a great day guys.